Welcome to our lecture online and now for our second example of how we can calculate the elevated boiling point of a solution when we add a solute to it. In this case we're going to add ethylene glycol which is an antifreeze. So we add that to water it should raise the boiling point of water which is a good thing in your radiator on very hot weather when the radiator, the water in the radiator gets really hot or I should say the solution because it's no longer pure water We'd like to have the boiling point a little higher. That way it's less likely to begin to boil and it, because once it boils it builds up uh, pressure and it's a very dangerous situation. You don't want to do that. So how high will the new boiling point be? So we're looking for T sub B, the new boiling point. No, notice that the constant uh, for water is 0 0.514 uh, degrees Kelvin times kilograms per mole. And the way we calculate it is the change in the temperature is going to be equal to that constant times the ratio of the number of moles of solute in the solution per kilogram of solvent. All right, so since we're, since we're adding 500 grams of ethylene glycol, we need to figure out how many moles of that uh, substance it is, how many moles of that solute. So first let's find the molar mass of that. Here's the chemical equation. So we can see that there's two carbon atoms in the molecule looks like there's two oxygen atoms in the molecule and two plus two is four plus two more is six hydrogen atoms in the molecule. So let's figure out what the molar mass would then be. So for carbon it would be two times 12 grams so it would be 24 grams for the two carbon atoms. Uh, we have uh, two times 16 grams uh, that would be 32 grams for the oxygen atoms and there's six hydrogen atoms in there, so it would be 6 grams altogether. That would be uh, 10, that's 2, 1, that's uh, 62 grams per mole. That would be the molar mass of ethylene glycol. All right, if we add 500 grams to that, so how many moles do we have? So the number of moles, number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. And so in this case, the mass that we add is 500 grams, and the molar mass is 62 grams per mole, and that will give us the number of moles. So with the calculator, let's figure out what that is equal to. So we have 500, oops, try it again, 500 divided by 62, so we have 8.06 moles, 8.06 moles. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and find the elevated boiling point temperature. So the change in the temperature, the change in the boiling point temperature is equal to the constant. That would be 0 0.514, that would be Kelvin times kilogram per mole. We multiply that times the ratio of the num of the moles of solute, which we now determine to be 8.06. So that's 8.06 moles divided by the number of kilograms of solvent and we're adding it to three kilograms of water so we have three kilograms of solvent. All right, so we that divided by three times 0 0.514 it looks like the increase in the temperature will be 1.38 Kelvin so that means that the new boiling point, T boiling point, is equal to the original 100 degrees centigrade for pure water plus the delta which would be 1.38 centigrade degrees which is a total of 101.38 degrees centigrade so that would be the new boiling point of that solution. Now you're not getting as much advantage out of antifreeze on the boiling point side you're getting actually more use out of that on the freezing point side because what you really want to do is you want to be able to lower the point at which the the solution will freeze on cold days and that's usually why they use antifreeze and that's usually why they call it antifreeze. This is just a bonus for antifreeze that the boiling point of the solution in your radiator is also raised but on the next example let's take a look and see how it protects you against freezing under cold weather with the same same solution. Maybe in this case we may want to add a little bit more ethylene glycol to lower the freezing point even more. So we'll see an example of that on the next video.